Hello everybody and welcome to the .NET 2020 conference. My name is Gwenda Shankalepore and I'm going to talk today about ML.NET. Uh, so how can you leverage your .NET knowledge to actually implement machine learning inside your application? I am a cloud solution architect working for Microsoft and especially in specializing in um, AI and machine learning projects. So before we start and we go deep inside what ML.NET is, I need to take a step back and talk about machine learning because we're talking about it. Uh, it's a trend and everybody talks about it, but it's, uh, it's actually something that we're going to need uh, to use the same terminology when we're going to go deep inside understanding what ML.NET does and uh, why it's useful for you. So let's start from a definition that I chose. So what is machine learning? Machine learning is actually the ability to program computers to solve a given problem using example data or past experience. And I underline example data or past experience because the data is something fundamental when you're doing machine learning. It's something that you need to take in consideration. The preparation, the uh, transformation, normalization, the part that is called pre-processing is going to take you 90% of the process that we're going to see in a minute of machine learning. But the other thing that is super important is to solve a given problem. The problem that you're going to have, the, the thing that you want to teach the machine needs to be very specific, as specific as possible that you can have. So it must not be generic. It must be something such as I want to understand before uh, it happens when my sensor is going to break. Well, that kind of sensor, the temperature one, humidity one. I want to be able to know uh, and predict how many licenses I'm going to I'm gonna sell next quarter. Um, I want to be able to understand if in this picture there are cats or dogs. If in this picture my logo is next to my competitor's one. Um, these are the kind of, um, of problem that you need to have. So very specific. But how does it work? Because it seems always that you have uh, some data, such as a picture, you have a problem, which is who's inside the picture, and then you want to get some information now. So for, for example, I want to understand who's in, in the picture. Are they men, uh, women, um, which is the uh, color of their hair, of their eyes? Are they wearing glasses? Um, uh, are they happy, sad, afraid? disgust, what is their feeling, what is your their emotion. So I have the two parts. So I have my data and I have what I want to do. But what is missing to machine learning is how the machine actually learns from the data that I'm giving to you. First of all, as I said to you, we just don't need one picture, but we need as many as possible. And the picture needs to be as diverse as possible. So different pose, different uh, lightning, uh, different people inside of different ages, different race, different gender, because I want to be able not to be biased. So I want to teach the machine the variety of the word, not just the part that I see. Okay. So this is fundamental uh, when, when you're training your algorithm. Then I have my problem to solve, but the part that is who's inside the picture. So what is the way that machine learns is actually a mathematical function that takes the data that I sampled and that I uh, label for it and learns the things that makes a woman a woman, a man a man, that makes uh, your head uh, of a certain length or your eyes of a certain colors, what, make, what means that a person is smiling instead of being angry or disgust or sad, etc, etc, etc. So actually what it does in the middle here where there are the people is actually there is actually a, a mathematical function that takes the data in and gives you the output that you're expecting. So there are different ML scenarios, so different tasks. Machine learning has, has become very, uh, very famous um, in the last years. Everybody talked about it, but we actually have uh, different uh, different scenarios that uh, can be solved using machine learning. So as you can see, uh, actually, uh, it's a very complex uh, task to, to, to answer. And there are many things that you need to take in consideration, the data that you have, the problem that you want to solve. Uh, and it can take some time before you actually go and uh, find out the right solution. But luckily, when we talk about machine learning, since uh, it's uh, very diffuse in these last years, there are some very specific, uh, very specific uh, tasks 
that you can actually solve with uh, machine learning uh, scenarios. Um, one, the, the most common are these four, but there are many others. Uh, so one is called classification, when you want to classify different things inside of a picture, um, uh, or uh, for example, cats and dogs, or what we did now, I want to be able to distinguish between people inside my picture, or distinguish between emotion inside of the people inside my picture. I want to be able to predict the weather and being able to discriminate if there is sunny, if it's sunny, cloudy, or there is a storm coming in. Um, this is uh, the kind of classification, can be uh, a classification of two types or more types. Then we have regression. Regression usually usually is uh, used to um, to calculate a specific predict a specific uh, number. Like for example, I have all the characteristic of a specific house, and I want to know the price. Or I have all the characteristic of a specific car, and I want to understand how much I'm gonna spend. Or uh, I want to know how many licenses I'm gonna sell in the next quarter. Or this kind of information. Clustering is when we want to actually cluster together information that are very similar or have characteristic in common. Um, and it's uh, a very complex scenario in which usually you don't uh, specify to the machine learning uh, algorithm what are you putting inside as data, but it is able to distinguish that there are groups that have some things in common and then you need to go deeper and understand um, the clusterization that the machine learning algorithm did. And then we have also recommendation system. They are pretty common nowadays. If you think an application like um, Netflix, Spotify, they actually suggest to you which is the next song that you need to hear and listen to or which is the next movie you should watch or the TV series that you should watch. Uh, and this is, all this is all based on uh, past experience that in that case is uh, what you looked before or um, the, the like or dislikes that you put inside the applications. So these are very common uh, ML scenarios that you're gonna find uh, if you start uh, if you start doing uh, ML, uh, and they are very classical. They are classical problems, but as I said before, um, there are specific figures that are called data scientists that usually work on what is called the machine learning workflow. And the thing that is uh, taking place in these years is, okay, I know how to solve my machine learning problems, but how can I actually implement all of this inside an existing application or an existing product? So first of all, the thing that you need to do, as I said before, you actually need to prepare your data. And this takes a lot of time, 90% of the time you're gonna spend on the first part of this slide. So what's on the left? So you're gonna prepare your data, you're gonna work on your data set, you're gonna see if you have all the data that you need, and if you don't, you're gonna need to find a way or to collect the new data from scratch, or actually to see if there are data sets that you can actually use inside um, that somebody else collected already and that you can reuse in some ways, paying maybe, or um, actually taking advantage of uh, online communities. Once you prepare your data, you need to actually build and train what is called a model. So when we talk about machine learning behind the scene, we're talking about a model. And the model is nothing else than a function, a mathematical function, where you put your data in and you expect some output. And it's fundamental to understand this because the model is uh, what, I, what you need to actually operationalize when you are uh, implementing it inside an application or a product. And then once you have the model, you need to test it and see if with new data, it actually works very well. And when you're satisfied with it, you need to, you can take uh, advantage of the fact that people are using your model or that you're sending new data inside of it, and you can actually restart this flow. So you can actually distinguish in this workflow two parts. One is the model creation and implementation, and the other one is the model consumption. It's super important to understand these two concepts because uh, we're gonna see them when we're gonna go deep in inside um, ML.net. Uh, and um, they are fundamental because uh, it's, uh, it's talking, uh, we are talking about uh, what is called right nowadays ML, MLOps. So how to operationalize your machine learning workflow. And it needs to actually comprehend all these three steps uh, inside. So does machine learning actually require skills? 
Uh, the answer is yes. And the skills that you are usually going to see and that you're going to need are languages and frameworks. Languages, the two main languages that you're going to find for machine learning are Python and R. Python has a very huge community. You're going to find many people using it. R is used a lot uh, inside the university or for research. Uh, but both are actually the languages used uh, in machine learning even though also C++ and C Sharp are coming their way on, on, this, on this word. And of course, if there are languages, there are also frameworks. So framework that you can take advantage and utilize inside your application to actually develop easier way in an easier way um, your machine learning models. Uh, especially TensorFlow, here I put some of them, TensorFlow, Keras, Cafe, PyTorch, uh, Sheikit, Learn, um, on an X. So they are all frameworks that you can take advantage of. They allow you to actually use very simple uh, machine learning algorithms uh, that solve the problems that we saw before, the scenarios that I showed you before, and in a very easy way, and that allow you to actually uh, take advantage advantages of a level of abstraction from them so that you don't need to go too deep inside what actually they do. Uh, but you can just understand, okay, this is a classification problem, I have an algorithm and I can actually use it. But, okay, so this was a very quick and uh, very high level introduction to what machine learning is. But as I said, today was about ML.NET. So how can you actually leverage your .NET knowledge to implement machine learning models? So let's take a step into what ML.NET is and how it works. So what it is, is an open source and cross-platform and cross -platform machine learning framework. It allows the .NET developers, F -sharp or C -sharp developers, to actually uh, create and customize uh, ML model. When I talk about a custom uh, machine learning model, I talk about things that you actually write with your code, which means that Microsoft also offer uh, as a very wide AI platform, and it offers you different level of machine learning tools that you can take advantages of. Um, uh, some of them, uh, the majority of them are on cloud. So for example, you have the cognitive services, which are the easiest way that you can actually start doing machine learning in your application. And cognitive services are APIs that you can actually call inside your apps that um, solve very specific problems defined, such as, I don't know, uh, computer vision problem, languages uh, from uh, speech to text, text to speech, or translation problems, uh, or understanding what are you saying in written language or spoken language. Uh, there are some recommendation systems that are done for you. Everything is already done, so you just need to understand what the cognitive services, the cognitive service does. Um, understand what is the input, what gives you as an output, and then you fit it in. You fit in the data because the model behind the scene has been trained from Microsoft for you. So you take advantage of millions of data, and you can actually leverage a model that is already built, already tested, and very robust for you. Um, it, they come from ages of uh, Microsoft Research Center work, so they're very easy to use. They, you can use them in whatever language you prefer, of course. So it doesn't matter if you're a Python developer or a C-sharp developer. You can actually take advantage of them since they are just APIs. Uh, but you cannot customize them a lot. There are some custom versions of uh, these, these cognitive services but they are uh, customizable only in part. You cannot customize them a lot because behind the scene, there are um, the training that has been done is been done with uh, data that Microsoft has. So if you want to customize on some things, on some scenario that is particular or very specific to your um, to your work or to your um, uh, to your scenario, uh, you probably need to do what is called the custom ML. So you need to actually write your code. And in that case, where Microsoft comes in, is giving you the possibility to use the, the power of the cloud, of course. So you probably will need uh, computation power, or you're going to need a uh, very huge storage um, places where to put your, your data, or where you need to actually manipulate your data. And you can actually take advantages of different uh, Azure services that you find online. 
Um, some of them you can actually take advantage of uh, also using ML.NET. For example, you can use Azure Machine Learning Service, which allows you to create all the computational instances that you need. And it creates for you an environment where you can actually take advantage of uh, versioning of each step of your machine learning workflow. So basically, uh, you start uh, putting inside your data and every time you change the data or you do something to the data, it actually creates a new version of them so that if you want to go back to a previous version because for any reason you think was uh, worthier than the last one, you can actually with few clicks or with some few common lines, commands, you can actually go back. Um, and the other thing that allows you to do is, of course, take advantages of all the computational power. So if you're working with images and you want to take advantage of GPUs, uh, machines or clusters, you can actually create one, attach it to your uh, data set and start the training uh, in a very easy way. And ML.NET, since it's a cross-platform and open source uh, framework, actually allows you to use machine learning service, Azure machine learning service. Uh, to actually run your experiment. So it's integrated in it. And allows you also to extend, to be extended with TensorFlow and also more framework that we saw before. So it's not something that uh, start from zero, it's already used inside Microsoft as being the base of our machine learning uh, um, products uh, and actually allows you to, in a very easy and inclusive way, to uh, to do machine learning and to and to start developing your machine learning algorithm inside your um, your applications. It runs anywhere, as I was saying. So you can use it on premises, on your machines. You can use it on Azure or on any cloud, on Edge, if you want to. And it runs on Windows, Linux, or MacOS, as I was saying before. And it's, it, it, is, it comes with a, a very nice community and you find uh, some repos repository from uh, GitHub uh, full of uh, .NET samples. Uh, these are just a few that I put it here just to give you an idea of the different things that you can actually uh, do. And as you can see, uh, there are all the scenarios that I said that were very common. Uh, the majority of them is already solved. So it means that you already have the algorithm inside the framework that you can actually take advantage of. So we have sentiment analysis, for example, understanding uh, the custom review, uh, the customer reviews uh, of, uh, web, of your web website, of your product. Uh, there are spam detections, so classification of spam or not spam messages. We have some recommendation system. We have the segmentation, so uh, the clusterization. Uh, we have some regression problems such as the price prediction, fraud detection, the sales forecasting. So there are very, very uh, different scenarios and they are mainly covered. So this is, uh, this is pretty nice, pretty good. Uh, and um, the GitHub repository is, of course, if you feel like contributing on it, you can actually do it. So I said that ML.NET was an inclusive uh, framework. And this, well, this was, uh, I wanted to say that because um, there are different ways in which you can actually interact with it, depending also in this case uh, on your knowledge, uh, on machine learning, and even also on the .NET uh, platform. So there are three ways in which you can actually use ML.NET. The first one is using the API, uh, aka using the code, writing code inside Visual Studio. Then we have what is called Model Builder. Model Builder is a very nice UI. We're going to see it in a second. Uh, it's a very nice UI that you can actually use to leverage uh, to leverage um, some uh, product that Microsoft actually created for you, in which you don't need to do anything. You just import your data, select the task that you want to solve, if it's a classification, a regression, a forecasting, and then it actually creates the code for you so that you don't need to do anything. You select the best algorithm possible that fits your data and then gives you um, the output code. And then we also have an ML.NET CLI, so a command line interface that you can use if you prefer, if you don't want to write code, but you just want to simply use uh, some lines of uh, CLI and you want to use them. Uh, there is also um, a CLI that you can take advantage advantage of. 
So let's start with the easiest one. So model builder. As I said to you, model builder is actually um, is actually um, a UI that you can take advantage of, and it does everything for you. I said to you before that uh, actually tries and finds the best model that fits your data. And what actually does behind the scene is using what we call AutoML. AutoML stands for Automated ML and automates the process of building the best performing models. So one of the biggest problem in machine learning was that everybody, like when, when you're trying to solve a problem, you actually need to test it on different algorithms. So for each classification scenarios that we saw before, there are different algorithms that you can use. And depending on which algorithms you're, you're using, you're going to have different level of confidence or uh, different levels of um, accuracy or different levels of performance for your data. So you need to test as many algorithms as possible to find the best one for your, uh, for your solution, right? And to do this was uh, not mechanical, was something, some, it was very manual. A few years ago, we launched what is called AutoML. AutoML basically takes uh, for different scenarios, specifically classification, regression, and prediction, and uh, sorry, forecasting. It takes these three clusters, and what it does for you is for each of them, it has a, a set of algorithms, and for the data that you put, as you can see here on the, on the left of the slide, there are your user inputs, so your data set, you're gonna define the data that you put in. You're gonna define which is the metric that he has to take in consideration. So if you want to see the performance, the accuracy or other specific um, uh, metrics and any constraints like time or cost. Time if you want to be sure that, I don't know, in 30 minutes you have a result and cost if you're using uh, training on cloud and you want to be sure that a certain point like after three hours, it stops and uh, whatever it tested uh, until that three hours, that's the result that you wanna see. After you gave to him uh, this kind of information, <clears throat> he's gonna actually test it and run it on different iteration on the different algorithms, set of algorithms that he has inside that class, in that, inside that uh, specific task that you define. And once he finished, he gives you the rank of the best model and uh, the score of the target metric that you define for each of the algorithm that it tested uh, your data to. So it's really, really nice because it does all this work for you. And uh, Model Builder actually allows you to do this all by UI. So you don't need to write a line of code. Of course, there is also the possibility to write some code. AutoML is in preview right now uh, in the SDK. Um, but you can actually do this uh, not only not only with the code, but also just uh, using um, just using the the UI. And I'm gonna show this to you in one second. So let me switch to Visual Studio right now. And in this particular example, I'm using Visual Studio 2019, the preview. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new project. But if you're doing this or you want to try this uh, on your Visual Studio or your, on your PC, what you need to do first is actually install ML.NET. And especially, you need to go <coughs> on, on your um, Visual Studio, um, you need to go on, your, uh, on, on, the, on the Visual Studio installation that you have and habilitate the ML.NET uh, extension, okay? So uh, once you've done that, you can actually go create a new project. We're gonna call this new project. As soon as he loads them, we're gonna, we're gonna call, uh, we're gonna look for a console application. So I'm gonna go console app. Let's see if he finds it. It's here, console app.net core. I'm gonna click on it and I'm gonna call it live demo mlnet. Okay, and I'm just gonna create a very easy uh, .net core application, console application. 
So now Visual Studio is going to create a very easy project. And once you use the Visual Studio installer to actually habilitate and um, add the ML.NET preview uh, inside your Visual Studio, Visual Studio uh, application, you're going to need to go to the settings and under preview, you're going to need to habilitate the preview of ML.NET. So as soon as it loads the the project, you should be able to see the project right now. Okay. So once you see and you have this project, as I said, you go to tools, options, and under preview features here, you're going to find enable ml.net model builder. If you don't see this here, it's because you need to go back, as I said, to um, ML installer, the, 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 sorry, the Visual Studio installer and actually uh, habilitate it from there before going here. Okay. Allowing this, so doing all this allows you to right click on the live demo project, go on add, and you're going to see here a machine learning, a machine learning um, tab. I'm going to click on machine learning. And as you can see, it's going to open for me this uh, nice UI that I have right here. And uh, as I said to you before, it actually gives you already some idea on uh, on scenarios that are already built for you. So if you actually click on this, it's going to create for you already the project. Uh, these are all the GitHub samples that you can find online that I showed you before. But especially, as you can see, there are different kind of tasks that you can do. So let's say that we are going to do um, some classification, some text classification. I'm going to have some Wikipedia uh, comments and some stuff. And I'm going to put inside uh, our um, model builder to see how it goes. So the first thing that asks you is your environment. So as I said to you, you can actually use your local PC or you can actually use uh, train this on, on Azure. We are going to use our local machine. And the next step after defining where you're going to train your data, we're going to need to give it the data. So let me quickly add inside my project um, my, my data set. So I'm just going to quickly do it uh, live <laughs> with you. Uh, you're not going to see it right now because I'm not sharing that part of the screen. But the only thing I'm actually doing is creating here to my project, adding a folder and this folder, I'm going to call it dataset. And inside this dataset folder, I'm going to put some, some data inside and some very easy uh, TSV files. And as you can see, it's uh, actually adding them. And once you finish to add them, I'm just going to select the files from my project. I'm going to go here, select my project, and go to my dataset folder and give it the t this TSV file. The nice thing is that while it's loading it, it's going to give you also a preview on how the file it is. And as you can see, you have uh, a column that is sentiment, sentiment text <clears throat> that gives you the idea of what is written inside. Sentiment one means that uh, it is bad or rude and zero means that uh, it's actually a good comment. And then there is logged in. So if the user was logged in or not. But let's focus on what actually uh, Model Builder allows us to do. So first of all, it allows us to define which is the column that we're going to predict. So for example, in this case, it's going to be sentiment. And which are the feature. So uh, label and feature, if you're not familiar with machine learning, are actually the terminology that you use. The label is what you want to predict, so what you want to answer to your question. And the feature are all the things that the machine learning algorithm is going to use to actually predict um, that label. And in this case, we're just going to use the sentiment text. We don't care about the logged in information. 
So I selected just one column and I go to the next step, train. So what allows you to here to do, uh, it gives you a, set up, a summary of what you selected right now. So the data set, the, the environment and the scenario that you chose. And then it asks you the time to train second. Do you remember I told you AutoML allows you to have a time constraint? In this case, we're going to use 10. Uh, this is in um, uh, this is in seconds, of course, and of course, the longer you train, the longer he has to actually test different models and uh, have a better accuracy. So let's give him uh, 100 seconds and click on start training. And while he does that, as I said to you, um, we actually are um, are, are gonna do uh, are gonna do something uh, a bit a bit different. Um, because I said to you, there are three ways in which you can actually interact with uh, <coughs> with uh, ML.NET. One is for sure uh, the model builder; it's the easiest way. But I also told you that you can actually write your code. So let's go to our program.cs file. And let's start edi editing it a bit. So I'm gonna delete the simple right line hello world thing that. He actually, um, he actually put, and I'm just copying and pasting some code. <laughs> Don't be scared because there are going to be many, many lines. Um, but just to give you an idea. And I'm going to be also importing our, of course, ml.net uh, library. And before we go uh, on, I also need to create in my project a new class. And I'm gonna do clicking on with the right um, clicking on with the right uh, clicking with the right on live uh, on my project add and I'm gonna do a class and is in this case the class that we're gonna add is gonna be called sentiment data and I'm gonna need this class to define my actually my my objects. So uh, uh, how I'm going to define my sentiment data. So we're going to try to actually write the code that uh, um, Model Builder is creating for us to implement our machine learning models. So, oops, I wrote uh, sentiment data. Yes, um, I did a mistake here. Let me just quickly fix it. OK. So we're going to start creating this class. And inside this class, we're going to have two things. The first thing that we're going to have is going to be a column called sentiment, which is going to be a bool. Let me zoom in. Uh, that is going to be a bool. Um, and um, and we uh, are going to have also another thing that is called sentiment text, which is going to be the description of our comment, right? So this is what we're going to need uh, to understand the data uh, that we're going to uh, use as an input of our machine learning model. But we also need the output. And as the output, the two things that we need, and we can add them right here in the same class, are going to be uh, what it, we call, we're going to call the sentiment prediction. So we're going to have the prediction information, which is going to be, since it's a categorization, the comment is rude or is good. So it's going to be a bool, true or false. We're going to have a probability because we're going to get back that from our model and also a score, which it's going to depend on uh, what we're going to do. And I'm going to save. Now let's get back to um, to my to my actually um, um, to my uh, my program here the the code that I wrote uh, for you I know I told you that uh, was um, um, was a lot it was very long code it's uh, seventy lines but it's just to give you an idea of what actually ML Builder while is still working does for you so. Let's look about a few things that uh, allows you. It allows you to do um, when we use uh, when we use uh, ML.NET and we are actually writing code. The first thing that you need to do is use the ML context. So ML context is exactly as if you're used to 
Yeah, if you are used to .NET, to .NET you, of course, uh, know the, the DB context. So conceptually, it's really similar, but it's, a, it's the starting point for everything you need to do when you do ML.NET. So if I set this as, uh, um, as my startup project and I try to compile it, it's going to do a few things for us, but ML context uh, basically contains all the information that you need to actually uh, in get um, oops there are some errors uh, there are some errors give me just one second to try to fix them okay sorry uh, I had just a few uh, a small problem with the import of uh, the ML library so as I said the ML context is actually uh, the starting point from everything so once you have the an instance of your ML uh, context you can actually load transform the data uh, choose your algorithm train the model evaluate the model and also save and deploy and consume your model so if you once you uh, define you instantiate uh, the ml context if you actually try to use intellisense with it you're going to see that you're going to have many 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 things such as uh, in this case uh, trainers and uh, algorithms binary classification clustering but you also have something on data uh, you have the model information the model object uh, and there are different, different things. So you need, every time you're writing code and you want to use ML.NET, you actually need to use uh, the ML context. You need to initiate the ML context. Then what I do here is just taking the data. So from our data set, that's why I added before uh, the, the folder. So we're gonna take the, the data from there um, and we're gonna just load it inside inside our inside a variable. And uh, when we talk about loading data inside ML.NET, ML.NET actually represent the data in, as an iData view. It's a, a very uh, flexible, efficient way of describing tabular data. So uh, can the, I, the iData view can contain object, uh, object can contain numbers, uh, text, booleans, vectors, and more. And uh, it's, uh, you, you can actually load them inside or you can actually access the data as a streaming live. Uh, from from your from your variable, the thing that we didn't say before uh, when we talked about the machine learning process uh, or workflow is that uh, when we train the model before training the model, we actually split the data, uh, and we split the data in training and testing. The training data, of course, is used to train the the algorithms and the model, and the testing data is to evaluate how good or bad the model has been trained uh, with the data. And it's super nice because inside the ML.NET, you have a train test split that takes the data that you just imported in iData view, and it gives you the possibility to decide how you want to split them, so which is the percentage that you want to split them, and actually split them in train and test for you so that you can easily access them. So it's pretty similar to um, uh, different framework if you're used to and you already work with machine learning. Then what we do is actually transform our data and uh, we take, uh, basically we take the feature that we got. So our, um, um, we take the feature that we said our, our sentiment text and we take our column uh, label and we actually normalize them because it's text and we need to make it comprehensible for the computer. Then what all that I do here is just training the data, so creating an estimator, fitting the training data, trying a prediction with the test data, seeing how the prediction went, and getting back some metrics. And when I'm satisfied with it, because I'm gonna, in this case, I'm just trying one algorithm, one well, a very specific algorithm, I'm just trying one model, I'm just fitting it with, to my data, and then I'm gonna try to create a sentiment data type of class, uh, with a uh, text, which is, this is a very cool session, and I'm gonna try to actually do a prediction and see how it goes. And in the end, I'm gonna save my model. I'm showing to you this, I know that it's a lot to take probably, but just because I want you to understand how complex it is when you need to write the code for you. And I want you to see in a second the difference between writing your own code or using Model Builder for uh, creating an ML, mo an ML model. So as I said, uh, I'm gonna try to run it. 
and then we're gonna go back to our model builder. I'm gonna try to run it and hopefully this time there are not gonna be errors of any kind. And we're gonna be able to see what I said to you. So it's gonna give us some output or not. <laughs> uh, so there is uh, an error uh, probably, yeah, in the, in the path that I give it to him. So it's not loading correctly the data. Just give me one sec. So yeah, sorry, there was a problem with the, um, a very small problem with the, the data, but now I should be able to load it. So as I said, so now what it's gonna do is gonna show you some outputs that I put in there. So it's gonna create and train a model uh, and then it's gonna try the model with the test uh, data that we had. It's gonna show us here. Oh, sorry, you cannot see it. Let me just uh, show you. Just show you, okay, the debug console so that you can actually see it. So as you can see here is actually evaluating, uh, is actually running the model. Here is the first time it's running it. So you can see some accuracy. Uh, there is um, the AUC, the FY score. These are all information that actually allows you to understand how good or bad uh, our model went. And in this case, it, it did pretty good. And then here it actually stops the evaluation and it tries the, the, the model uh, with uh, the sample that I showed to you before, right? So it's going to show to you um, right now, it's going to go here and do um, and try this one, which is the data that I put inside. So this is something that he never saw and he doesn't have the sentiment of this. He has to predict it, right? So if we go back to our, uh, to our console, we can see that <clears throat> is actually taking this, the sentiment, this is a very cool session, the prediction is positive and the probability is not very high, but it's good, it's 0.7, so it's not that bad. And after this, what I make it do is actually save the model. What saving the model means is it basically just take the ML context and the model object and saves it as a uh, bin file and with it takes the model so how it got the prediction and also the schema of uh, of the data of course because it needs to understand what he has as an input and he saves it as my first model dot zip so to show you um where actually where actually um is putting this um i'm gonna show you here my uh, my folder and this is our live demo ML.net project. So if I'm gonna go back here, I'm gonna open the folder and I'm gonna do go on bin and debug. You're gonna see that inside the .NET application, there is gonna be a my first and model zip. That is what is just created and put it inside there. So my, my, my model is there and I can actually reuse it whenever I want because I already trained it and it's ready to use. And my .NET console, it, uh, ML, uh, ML.NET framework, sorry, allows me to take that model and replicate and re reuse it inside another application. So it's, it's pretty cool if you think about it. But let's go back to our model builder, right? Because that's what we want to see how it is working and how it finished. So we define, just to recap, we define the scenario, we define the environment, we gave him the data and we train it. The difference between what we just did with the code is that with the code we just wrote and test just one algorithm, what our ML model builder did was test the model, test our data, sorry, with different algorithms and actually selecting what is the best accuracy that he found and which is the best model that he found for our data. So as you can see here, he found the best model. It took him 98 seconds and uh, he created one model. So the next step is evaluating our model. So let's, let's do that. In this case, we're gonna try the same. So we're gonna put here this session is super cool. We're gonna do predict 
and here it's gonna show you that uh, zero was good and one was bad. He, he actually is able to predict that is um, that is a good comment. Let's try with um, something like I something that you should never say to an Italian. I don't like pizza. Let's try with this. And as you can see, he's very, very sure that it's uh, a bad comment and not a good one. And should it be a comment that you should do, actually. So as you can see, our model is working. We did exactly the same thing as what we just scored few seconds ago. The difference is that we tested with different algorithms. We got the best model that we could have. And we are actually able right now, just creating the next step, which is code, to add to our project here. So if you take a look here on the right of my screen, you're going to see that when I click on code, um, it's going to basically add two other project to my to my um, to, to my uh, to my demo. So I'm going to do adding project. And the first thing is going to add to is going to be the console app. So it's going to recreate an, another app that it's going to use uh, the data that we put inside uh, to, to test it. So it's ready to use. You can already test your model here, but it's also creating what is called uh, the project that calls model. And inside there, you can actually see all the definition that we do by end. So the model input, for example, here, it's very similar to the one that we created. That was this, our sentiment data class. And we are going to have a model output that it's going to be a prediction and score. And you are going to have here, if you can see it, there is a model ML model dot zip that you can actually use. And there is the definition uh, of the prediction engine, which is what you need and what we defined. If I go back here, the, predi the prediction engine is what we define here to actually test our model with new data. Okay, so it basically did everything that I did in 70 lines. It did it for you in a very easy way. And you, with just a few clicks, you were able to actually add it to your uh, solution and to use it. And to show you that actually it works, I'm going to set this up as a startup project and I'm going to run it. And we're going to test it with our, with, um, I'm going to open maybe the program CS file so that you can see that it's going to have already a fixed fra um, phrase inside, which is, uh, dude, you are rude, upload that car picture back or else. Um, and as you can see here, if I go back here, it's going to take you to the sentiment text here. The sentiment value is one, so it's a bad sentiment and gives you the scores for the bad sentiment and for what he thinks is uh, the percentage of the score uh, for if it was possible positive. So as you can see, it works. It's really easy. It does that for you. You don't need to write a line of code. It actually works seamless, seamlessly. Uh, just thank you to this uh, UI and AutoML behind the scene. But let's go back to our presentation because I'm really close to the end of, uh, of this session. And as I said to you, I show you two of the three ways in which you can actually use ML.net and I'm missing the last one, uh, the ML CLI. So let's go back uh, to, our, to our screen and let's go to and see um, how we can actually use PowerShell to, to use, um, to use, um, our um, ML.net, um, uh, to use ML.net, sorry. So uh, the first thing that you need to know, of course, is that you actually need to install uh, ML.net uh, CLI inside your application. To do so, you can just actually uh, use the .NET tool install uh, dash G ML net, and it's going to install to you. I just updated mine before the session to be sure that everything was working. And to show you how easily it actually works, um, this is a very easy example of what we just did with ML Builder and what we just did with um, uh, the Model Builder, sorry, and what we just did with our code. So I'm going to use 
uh, MLNet CLI to do a classification task with the data set that we just saw. So just understanding the sentiment inside the phrase. I'm going to tell him which is the, the label column that he needs to predict. I'm going to give him the, if the file has either or not. And I'm always going to give him training time. So he basically is doing exactly what we saw with the model builder behind the scene. You can actually do it also using the CLI. So in this case, he's using AutoML. So it's running a battery of algorithms. It's trying different ones based on the constraint of time that you give it to him. And it's trying to see which is the one that gives you uh, the, uh, the best result. For the sake of time, um, I'm just going to try it for 10 seconds. So I'm going to run it. And as you can see, in a few seconds, it's going to try. Also, in this case, it's implicit that it's going to run it on my local machine. It's going to try with uh, the first, probably, uh, algorithm. It's not going to have time to do much more in 10 seconds. And it's going to tell me for, for sure that it is, uh, uh, that is finished. So. Meanwhile, that is trying to actually run the algorithm, as I said to you before, we can go back to the presentation. And uh, I took a screenshot before just to show you how uh, good uh, it did. So as you can see, it actually trained with our one algorithm because also in this case is using behind the scene AutoML. Uh, is trying to do it. And then what it does, it actually saves for you inside uh, the, the folder where you are. You generate the code, so the C-sharp code that you need for consumption, and also gives you some uh, log file. And it creates for you also, in this case, the, um, uh, the zip file containing the model. So I'm sorry that I wasn't able to show it to you, but um, You'll need you need to trust me on this one. Uh, it's still trying to uh, to run it. So I'm gonna leave to you. These are my um, on the left. You can find uh, the ways you can actually contact me if you have any question, if you have curiosity, if something, if you want to give me some feedback on this session. I'm gonna be very happy to help you. And I'm going to thank you for listening to this session, for joining us online today. And of course, I also want to thank all the sponsors, uh, Playing Concept and all the others. Uh, I want to thank them a lot uh, for making this possible. So thank you very much. And I hope to see you uh, in person very soon. Stay safe. Bye.